Hello and welcome to Adikimi's YouTube channel. My name is Harsh Singh and in this video we shall discuss the feature news for today, 16th of February 2022. Today's feature news is on agricultural mechanization. This becomes a very important segment uh, for uh, upgradation of agriculture in India that is mechanization. And today's feature news is specific to drone technology which has been encouraged for the use in agriculture with the custom hiring centers. But along with that comes complete uh, mechanization of agriculture. So I will not only deal with the drone industry, we will also talk about mechanization of agriculture per se in general as well. What are the advantages? What are the issues? What are the ways in which India has tried to mechanize its agriculture technology? So this feature news provides wonderful, wonderful opportunities to understand the complete uh, system of mechanization of agriculture in India. All right. So let's begin this discussion by welcoming all of you participants here. Hi, Amlan, Netra, Kriti, Hima, Ashish, Bhavani, Vakram, Vivek, Tiyasha and all the people joining in later offline. Welcome to all of you. Let's discuss this. Now, uh, before we get into mechanization of agriculture, we must understand uh, what are the basic agricultural processes, right? So, uh, agriculture has got uh, specific purposes, right? So, right from the point of uh, cultivation, right? So tilling of land, one basic process that, that people utilize themselves in, right? Tilling of the land. And this was earlier done manual. They started using the, uh, the workforce, the animals later, right? The beast of burden later, right? And then is the job of sowing the seed, right? Manually sowing the seed. Moving ahead, moving ahead to another, the next process is, uh, yes, is, is uh, application of, uh, the fertilizers or minerals, other products in the uh, in the soil, in the you know, uh, in the complete ecosystem, and after that comes the weeding, the process of weeding. Moving ahead to another process that is uh, the part of irrigation of the complete uh, agricultural fields, and after that, when the product is completely ready for it to be taken out, it's harvesting done by manual processes. It is not yet over. The other processes, for example, the winnowing process, right, and stubble burning, they are also a part of agricultural process. And you can well imagine, side by side, I have shown, I have also shown how it has been mechanized over time. So, before we get into mechanization, we must understand uh, what are the benefits of mechanization. So, all presented at one specific place, right, uh, agriculture mechanization, what is its meaning to begin with? The meaning of agriculture mechanization is developing machinery. Their increased usage, not only developing, their increased usage and replacing human or animal power. In fact, raising the power level per hectare is also very important. Every hectare towards the whole of the country, not only in the northern part or not only on those areas where green revolution uh, is high, but throughout the whole country. The advantages of agricultural revolution uh, using uh, mechanization are increasing quality of products giving better livelihood and earnings to people this guy's unemployment will be less right what about the cropping intensity cropping intensity which is around 140 in india right now 1.4 times of the agricultural field we are able to cultivate per year though in you know in saying we have three agricultural seasons uh, we have rabi kharif and zaid but then we are able to plant only 1.4 times the uh, field in a particular year. This will increase because mechanization will ensure that timely harvest is there, timely uh, processes are met, right? It will also lead to better employment, forward and backward linkages, something that I mentioned to you previously, it will lead to industrial development in the country. Per person productivity will increase. Please remember the first person productivity in agriculture is very, very low, especially because it is manual. India's level of mechanization right now is at around 40%. But if you look at the developed countries, the proportion of population who are a part of agriculture, that is less. The proportion of uh, part of GDP of agriculture also is less, right? But their agricultural productivity is high, right? Their uh, product diversity is also very high. So, these are the advantages which agriculture mechanization can give. It can also improve input efficiency and have commercial agricultural gains also. But does it have effects, side effects? Yes, it does. Of course, it does. What about the kind of uh, fuel that is being used? Presently, diesel. So, this is a side effect of it, right? So, using those uh, fuel which is causing climate change, right? Small land holdings in India. The small land holdings, 
do not invite mechanization because people can work by their own hands and also this is largely intensive driven our own agriculture this is subsistence based this is uh, you know intensive and people would not uh, indulge in uh, commercialization of uh, farms right finances the cost involved in the machine cost if a tractor costs 7 8 lakh rupees who is going to purchase it right finances is high cost is high uh, there is an inertia of people they say we have the bull no let them do the job so inertia of uh, uh, you know processes like stubble burning again even despite knowing that it could possibly yield them some advantages some benefits only not doing that so knowledge barriers is also there people do not even know how to operate machines especially in cases of females right we just studied the example of the dtc uh, drivers females are not able to they are not uh, uh, they have not been empowered to drive uh, the the tractors at all i have not seen a female driving tractor as of now but yes I, what the point i'm mentioning is that uh, accessibility to these kind of devices is not there for all the masses it is also not there for people uh, poor people uh, specifically when uh, the agri and when when the rural population migrates to urban areas the males migrate but on the other hand the females they remain back at the village and they are not able to participate in this mechanization process what about uh, maintenance of these devices the orderly maintenance is also not carried out because availability of spare part knowledge is limited to people the price also depreciates pa price of these machines also depreciate very fast this also leads to further unemployment a few people employed they also would be rendered unemployed because agricultural laborers would be less used now right so migration will definitely decrease but few people will be used and payment will be given uh, which is less so see there are such disadvantages and advantages covering this is not the only thing you will have to remember each of them so let's discuss through images what are the main important uh, components of uh, agricultural mechanization oh some benefits some additional benefits are for example doubling of farmers income right farming through machine increasing the ratio of farm power ratio of farm power per hectare right it will uh, lead to better efficiency in labor also growth of the nation and complete supply chain as well all right so when we look at the complete process of agriculture this is how it is we level the field first through a tractor then we start plowing it plowing is the process in which we ensure that the complete soil is aerated well right so that uh, uh, the nutrition can uh, go within the uh, layers of soil plowing and then after that sowing or you know putting in the seeds in the soil this is another process after that people try to protect the plant that they have nurtured so they nurture the plant they ensure that the weeds are taken out this is all manual process and after that watering of the plant and after that when it is ready it can be harvested and later uh, other processes for processing of the particular crop for example threshing winnowing all that can be carried out all right so when you look at the farm processes it is as simple as this uh, yes here it is so first level if during primitive times not primitive just 30 40 years back we would be having these kind of uh, sites in villages now we are seeing the sites of tractors right uh, two wheeler tractors or tractors which have got additional mechanized uh, you know components they are able to uh, make the complete uh, land ready for agriculture the second process is tilling right or sowing so this is the process in which uh, earlier people would be doing it manually and later using some equipments right and now we have this device which is uh, uh, the sowing machine what it does is that you put all the seeds right at, at the top of this machine and you keep moving it the tractor pulling this machine through these pipes this the seeds will be uh, you know they will be implanted deeper in the soil so good part of mechanization and this also leads to better uh, performance because it is faster to operate right look look at this and look at the times of uh, uh, monsoon the farmers wait for the time when it is going to rain right and this is when they immediately harvest their uh, or plant their crops right and this can become further hastened provided we use these machines look at the processes precision farming precision farming so earlier if people are spraying through usage of uh, the spraying machine look at this spraying machine the whole machine is able to spray at a very precise level have a look on one hand the spraying is happening at a you know at 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 larger scale on the other hand the machine spraying is at a very very precise point at the points where 
there are outlets. So this is far more precise. This also leads to saving of the inputs. This also leads to lesser fertilizer consumption. This also leads to lesser pesticides in our own food supply chain. Imagine that. And when we talk of uh, removal of the weeds, manual process, such delayed, and this is also cost, uh, you know, input. Then we had the mechanical devices. See what happens in mechanical devices is that the weeder ensures we have to walk it through. It ensures that uh, you know the complete soil around that particular crop it, it comes up and so the uh, the weeds would come up and now look at the machine weeders they would operate in a very very systemized fashion commercial cropping this is what it is so wheels would ensure that the that you know weeds which are which got planted and which are sucking in those resources which the plant should have actually used they are uh, you know taken out from the soil itself. Look at this process, automated, completely automated. What about precision uh, irrigation? When you look at precision irrigation and the advantages of it uh, with respect to flood irrigation, in flood irrigation, canal system will take some uh, decent amount of you know uh, input, the creation of the complete capital setup, along with that, the kind of salinization it leads to. And in comparison, look at the precision of uh, the agricultural uh, irrigation. Now this led this leads to saving of water resources also, valuable water resources, and also developing good uh, sustainable soil in the long run. Right. Not only that, when you look at uh, the completely harvested crop, look at how manual labor is indulged in uh, time taking process of harvesting. And when a harvester works, this can harvest. The scalability of uh, the efficiency of this harvester is more than 100 times what people would do uh, in a day more than 100 times far more than 100 times if you see a video on youtube it would it would quickly show to you people how fast the harvester moves right uh, have i prepared a video here no all right maybe some other day not today all right so this is the advantage of using mechanized instruments in agriculture. India is going through 30 to 40 percent level of mechanization right now. And what is required is to mechanize those places also where farm productivity is low, where we have uh, uh, smaller farms, right, smaller land holdings, where there is poverty and people are not able to use it. And how are we going to do it? We are going to do it through custom hiring centers. These are those places. See. The either input can be directly given to the person, right? So input based subsidy could be given or direct input could be given and government is giving that 50% of subsidy on purchase of any farm equipment. But who will be able to purchase one and a half lakh rupees of the cedar machine? Nobody. Happy cedar machine? Nobody. So because these are poor farmers and not all the time throughout the year do they use these kind of machines. No, harvester is used only in a particular season when far, for, uh, the harvesting is required. It is not used throughout the year. So point being, can we also have a place where the uh, entities can be used only specific season? Yes, custom hiring centers go to those places. So people who are going to operate custom hiring centers, government is also giving subsidy to them so that they can uh, have these devices, they can rent them to people at the times of requirement. Now, what is the update? This was the old news, no? The government initiated SMAM, Submission on Agricultural Mechanization in 2014-15, old news. What is the new news? The new thing here is that government has also encouraged now the usage of drones in agriculture. Drones. How? All the processes. The reason I showed you the processes here is because I wanted you to know that drones can be used at all the levels. Right? How? For example, let me show you an image right here. So many images. Yes, here it is. Look at this image itself. Drone can be used to know the kind of uh, 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 you know cropping that is present at a particular place. Drone can also signal these harvesters or those devices which are spraying uh, uh, minerals, insecticides, pesticides, fertilizers. How? What is the proportion of uh, fertilizer they must spray? How? Because through the analysis of the color or the kind of pattern of cropping that has happened, drones can easily tell the machines based on the data input. They can easily tell the machines what is the level of uh, maturity of the crop or disease prevalence in the crop. And this is how they must operate. Look at this level of automation. Huge. Drones can also be used, right? The fixed wing drones can be used to map the places. Swamitva. 
as you mentioned, 1 lakh out of 6 lakh villages already uh, mapped. So through this mapping, we can also understand the level of water presence, the uh, gauging of the uh, disasters happening, what is the level of flood at that particular place or uh, uh, what about the dry, dry land uh, area, what is the level of uh, drought in that particular area. So through this, understanding the insurance schemes and faster disbursement of insurance also would be possible drones. Drones will also be able to easily understand the level of production at a particular place. It takes a while to understand the estimates. No, This will be a faster way to understand the estimates and through this, the government will also be able to prepare in advance in case there is inflation. Right? Stop scheme. Tomato, potato and onion and others also. All the other vegetable crops. Drones. Drones can also be used for multiple purposes. For example, spraying off uh, the small, smaller, uh, uh, you know, minerals or uh, available uh, chemicals and pesticides, whatever it be, right? So, see the multiple ways in which drones can actually be utilized. Drones can also be utilized to understand the multi, uh, the micro level weather at a particular place. Such advantages of drones and government has said, fine, we will also use drones in custom hiring centers, right? Now, this is where I would like to remind you of natural farming. Zero budget natural farming, although not a part, but then this is what is called as linking of all the various segments. So when we studied zero budget during natural farming, there were four components of it. Jeev Amrit, Bij Amrit, Achadana and Vapasa. Now you start thinking how drones can be utilized to understand uh, all the four components of zero budget natural farming or how it can aid it. Because government is promoting this as well, government is promoting uh, drone farm, drones as well, right? So both of them, how they can aid each other, this is what you should look at. For example, if moisture content, weeding, temperature, microclimate, all is a part of Achadana and uh, uh, this is also a part of, oh, it's a part of Vapasa, it's a part of Vapasa, then how can drones ensure the level of moisture or weeding at a particular place, farm mechanization? How can Achadana, that is uh, mulching, be associated with the uh, drone usage? Drone can tell the microclimate of a place and accordingly a, a place can be used for um, uh, mulching activities, whether it be organic mulching or inorganic mulching, right? Similarly, some activities for uh, Bij uh, Mitra or uh, Jeevamrita, right? So this is how drones can be utilized in all the ways here in the industrial uh, development, in the agricultural development using mechanization, right? So, uh, coming back to the feature news, this submission on agriculture mechanization has spoken that drones will be used now in a couple of ways. First, financial grants for purchase of drones. You want to purchase it for uh, industrial purposes. For example, um, agricultural universities, right? Indian Council of Agricultural Research or uh, Krishi Vigyan Krendra. You want to demonstrate this technology free of cost. Drones to be distributed by the, to them free of cost. 100% of the cost of agricultural drones or 1 10 lakh rupees, whatever is higher, to be given to these organizations. Support to farm producer organizations. We had, we had, you know, had a feature article on farm producer organizations in totality. So these are those organizations associated with all the farmers. All the farmers collectively, they will have this FPOs. This is like a, this is like a cooperative, right? So uh, support will be given to purchase these kind of uh, drones. So receive grants up to 75% of the cost of agricultural drones. Not only that, per hectare support of 6,000 rupees also will be given to demonstrate this technology. So great, right? Great initiative by the government and 40% um, uh, of the cost of drone, its attachments will be covered and, you know, custom hiring centers also will be taken uh, in, in, you know, to participate. So this is where we have spoken about what is submission on agriculture me mechanization. What do you need on SMAM? You need uh, ADEC. You need ADEC on farm mechanization. So, what are the keywords, right? SMAM is a keyword in itself. What are the cases or examples? Use the example of Punjab Haryana where the productivity has increased because of mechanization. What is the data of present level of mechanization in India? 40%. What is the present level of uh, farming, uh, cropping intensity? 140%. So, this is not sustainable. We must increase our cropping intensity to 200 plus and uh, mechanization to 80% plus, right? And analysis, analysis is what we are studying all the time, right? For example, uh, women not being made a part, party to this, for example, uh, 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 leading to uh, lesser jobs availability in these areas, right? Because of mechanization, these are analytical abilities. Analysis will be positive and negative, both of it, right? So, uh, significance of these guidelines is that we are going to use these drones very much, 
it will also save inputs how did you forget this saving seeds fertilizer inputs cropping intensity improvement encouraging the rural youth to join agriculture see the youth is not also participating in not participating in agriculture also because from my family they will have to do the manual work right so, so the the drudgery in farming activity toiling under the sun if that can be avoided youth will definitely may may want to join it right so this is what the power instruments will do see tractor when the question comes on tractor tractor is a power driven instrument uh, a device which can actually pull or push pull or push other machines so a tractor can be attached to all of these machines tillers uh, right uh, feeders weeders uh, harvesting machines all of them but they are specialized harvesters also for example the one used in uh, uh, us and europe those harvesters can not only harvest they can also uh, ensure that the winnowing is done and the completely packaging of the material is done just like just like uh, there are countries japan japan so i was watching this in one of the uh, episodes that when the trawlers the fishing boats they go in the high seas to collect tuna tuna fishes they not only collect tuna fishes they also ensure that they are they are processed and packed right in the trawler itself and canned and all ready for sale so this is the power of one mechanized boat imagine this india is only in the process of creating these mechanized boat which can go deep in the ocean right deeper into the ocean inside the uh, 200 nautical mile zones in, in exclusive economic zone and get these kind of catch they, these boats go not for one day or two days they go for six seven days at a stretch similarly if you could have one integrated device which could actually enable uh, the integration in agriculture mechanization drones can participate in those technologies right see uttar pradesh punjab haryana they have high level of uh, level of mechanization 70 to 80 percent and more more so for wheat and rice why because the major crops is in those regions they provide for um, you know msp also is there but other places only 35 to 45 percent of farm mechanization this is what needs to be increased states in northeastern part have very low level of uh, farm mechanization so another uh, issue for example hilly topography transportation socio economic conditions see this is the analysis that mechanization is there but it is lopsided present only at specific places not at other places mechanization also should be seen from the light of climate change right it should be seen uh, to preserve or or ensure that farm precision farming is done is it being aided oh absolutely it is being aided this is a, a, a keyword right so precision agriculture will include all the kind of inputs rationalized inputs it helps yes it does growth uh, what are the growth drivers socio economic factors the increased participation of women is already happening but we have to ensure that women must participate in uh, farm mechanization also analysis for you this is a good deeper level of analysis right what about the drudgery drudgery of farm activities this will improve the situation will improve if we mechanize right so hand drain will not happen and machine drain will happen which is a good thing agriculture and agronomic driving factors See, this will increase cropping intensity crop productivity this will improve in, improve efficiency in cropping i remember having clearly mentioned that china has more uh, 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 you know uh, the, the dissections in farms at farther farther levels than what india has right so uh, the small holdings are more in china as compared to what india has but farm productivity is still higher in china their cropping intensity is also higher how why this is something that india also must work upon right economic driving factors cost and time efficiency see once we are trying to use these machines also i didn't talk of the baling machine there is a baling machine as well this particular baling machine is the one which ensures that um, the stubble left over the stubble left over is baled it is in the form of balls these balls that you see here these are the balls instead of farmers burning them as as stubble later this can be actually utilized as input for um, for industries what industries we are talking of biomass industries creating gases we are talking of uh, creation of pellets bio pellets and in, and putting them in uh, uh, the thermal power plants tpps imagine that all through farm mechanization not not possible through the traditional processes because all this is time taking and this is the reason that we burn them but if we mechanize this whole process it becomes far easier all right and mechanization and sending it to the right places right so you look at the advantages it will also uh, decrease the kind of pollution in those places so cost time efficiency manufacturing sector growth 
the uh, the linkages forward and backward linkages look at few examples of this so start looking at examples when we speak of iron industry what is the forward linkage and what is the backward linkage agriculture industry what is the forward linkage and backward linkage similarly coal industry what is the backward linkage and forward linkage so whenever they ask you a question on renewable sources of energy increasing them you will talk about the coal industry getting uh, you know a setback and its forward backward linkage is also getting impacted this is what is UPAC preparation linking them all and then you see the magic the magic of how beautifully you are able to get past all these constraints right so uh, look at the beautiful image it it talks of interventions to strengthen farm mechanization in country so what what can we do now when people are not able to hire these instruments when it is not available at all the places what we can do is uh, we can have a scheme to deliver this kind of mechanization how public private partnerships what about private sector participation corporate initiatives or contract farming they themselves delivering the machines all right now we that law has gone but still ppps contract farming is still happening in india yes so ppps in delivering machines also future ready farm mechanizations right what we use in europe i could i wish i could show that to you on images here uh, or, or videos but that can be achievable in India. And once we go to Punjab and Haryana, I have seen those kind of uh, uh, instruments being used, but never being used in South India or East India, never. So we have to make them future ready and drone industry is going to work that thing out. Upgrading skills of people, why, why ask people from other places to join in? The, we will upgrade the skills of the local people and ask them to use these devices and improving access to finance in case people want to own them these these are the four five measures in in fact not just these measures improve and put more measures the point is you should be able to use an illustration like this right so this is what we understand in a scheme like farm mechanization and also on um, especially on the uh, the drone industry so i will show you an answer that i had written on the drone industry itself right but before that, let me share what we studied right here. What we study right here is uh, the complete supply chain of agriculture industry. Cotton, I remember uh, chips, uh, semiconductor chip manufacturing, uh, many others we discussed. So agriculture is again right here. You have understood. I am sure that you would have understood all the processes and how the manual processes have been automated through the use of machines. The data regarding the all right. The second thing that we understood is the data, the data regarding the level of mechanization in India or the lopsided level of mechanization along with understanding the cropping intensity in a country like India. We also understood through uh, uh, the advantages and disadvantages of mechanization in India, right? I have shown you that in an image. Moving ahead, we also understood through images the various kind of mechanization techniques used in India. We also understood how and how and why a drone can be especially useful in farm mechanization and we also understood ways in which uh, improvement in mechanization could happen see so many aspects of uh, farm mechanization precision farming all done together all right so why don't we have a question here we had a question here i think this has not been put here in the final edition we had a question here right so the question for you could be could be uh <laughs> I had already given you the question. <laughs> All right. So good that you people attempted the question there. The question for people who are attempting right now or maybe looking at the question here uh, could be uh, what are the factors or 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 uh, uh, or discuss the factors which lead to uh, lesser productivity in farm in India and how can farm mechanization aid uh, farm productivity? All right. Now. A quick answer on a question on drones. I had expected that question to come in this examination, this examination itself, but it didn't come. Why it was in news was because drone was very much in news throughout the whole country the last year. So, and drone policy was also initiated. Now, there was a drone policy of 2021, right, last year. And along with that, there was a, uh, you know, drone uh, order by the government of the year 2019. The first order was about regulation of drone industry. Why? Because drones can be used to deliver uh, 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 these uh, ammunitions and arms as well. So therefore, uh, the government had this uh, safeguarding of critical assets and, you know, uh, inhibiting drones in spe specific areas. 
So I framed a question which spoke about both of them, discussed the rationale behind new drone policy, how does government attempt to safeguard critical assets in the liberalized regime. So hitting two birds with the same, uh, with the same bullet. So second part of the answer was about uh, these critical assets, the three type of critical assets that we have in the country, full scale, uh, 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 and then mid segment, and then the basic model, right? In the basic model, the only the government officers are the prime targets. In the mid-level assets, those are the places which are places of national importance, right? For example, National War Memorial, India Gate, Gateway of India, research institutions, uh, government buildings, important buildings. And the critical assets are nuclear installations, Prime Minister's home or uh, the Rashpati Bhavan. Those are the kind of assets that we are talking of. And this is where the government initiated policies like, uh, 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 like specific models to ensure that the drones are not uh, flown in those areas, right? So, uh, deploying counter unmanned aircraft systems, PUAS, counter unmanned aircraft systems, right? And uh, in basic model, applying anti-drone measures. So, trying to regulate drone users through electronic jamming or physical, uh, uh, you know, barriers, physical interceptions. This, this is the second component of the answer and the first component of answer is about uh, the new drone policy. See? So fostering trust in non-commerce usage. In, in non-commerce usage, that means the, uh, in the applications for entertainment. This is one example of that. So number of forms reduced. See, I've given example also. I don't know if you're able to see this. With every point that I write, I give an example or I give a case or, or I give a data. See, earlier these number of forms, now reduced number of forms, we also reduced technology to the aid of uh, utility. So we, I also showed how technology is going to aid, for example, drone taxi or delivery through drones, minimum human interference and regulation. There will be a digital sky platform, a digital sky platform. Now this is applicable for some SMAM also, there will be a digital sky platform, all the drones will be registered there and where they are flying, what time they are flying, this will all be coming in that digital sky platform. They will all be regulated through say chip devices and the government will know where they are flying, what is the height that they are flying at, what is the distance from the nearest airport or a critical uh, infrastructure destination. The government has also increased the investments direct investments or, uh, or or hybrid investments, what we call as blended investment. See, drone promotion council, council to increase multi-sectoral and stakeholder participation. So do you think when this question that directly did not come in, the, come in the examination, it was not helpful? Not at all. Not at all. When there were four questions related to, five questions related to internal security or um, uh, international relations or uh, dealing with the security issues in paper two, they all were, they, these were the points of answers because uh, segments of this answer could have been used to answer those questions. Keywords to yahi hai na, news mein to yahi tha. So this could have definitely formed a major component of the answer. This is the power of answer writing. This is the power of noting the keywords. They can be utilized and scaled to write at multiple places, replicated at other places, right? Kim Jong is back. Welcome back, Kim. North Korea wale. Ashish says, is the use of drones similar to what satellites uh, does in collecting data, but at a smaller scale? There are, see, what uh, Ashish, this is a very, very good question. But see, what satellite does is at a very, very big level, no, satellite and earth. And, it, and you know that it has its own advantages and disadvantages. For example, cloud cover and we are not able to see through. For example, uh, dust particles and it is not very clear. For example, reflection, right, uh, albedo. But if we have drones operating at a smaller level, uh, you know, this kind of data collection will be smoother. There will be less discrepancy there. But satellite does it far more efficiently for a larger region and drones can be used for a smaller reason because scalability of drones will have to be you know done at a, at a very big big level no but a, a one satellite or two satellites we just had yesterday dispatching of three satellites so we covered this in the image of the day so two of those satellites could be used for ocean navigation for for uh, the resource mapping in the ocean areas resource mapping in for disaster management and uh, uh, water mapping so those Two or three satellites can themselves map the whole country, imagine, and we are going to use few drones only for a small local area. So drones for a local area, drones for high precision and uh, satellites for uh, higher area mapping. And yes, precision is also not bad. All right. So this is one. Vakram says the need to make agriculture technology driven 
and less labor intensive is more urgent than ever discuss this is the question sir all right yes makram thank you thank you i think you have looked at the website and said the need to make agriculture technology driven and less labor intensive is more urgent than ever yes absolutely it is more urgent than ever because agriculture this question is not directly on this topic uh, but then yes let's decipher because agriculture is uh, uh, there is more disguised unemployment uh this guys disguised unemployment this is one the need is more so in the times when we need more manufacturing potential make in india right the need is more so when there are compelling technologies which are giving competition to indian technologies so external and internal trade balance external and internal trade imbalance this is very prime because of this our our goods are not rendered competitive especially the agricultural products give me the examples example is milk itself example is uh, the cropping intensity itself when the farmers are not getting the due return this is not profitable right so we are not able to practice agriculture at commercial level this is an urgent demand for the time uh, also because also because uh, there are push based technologies operating right and uh, after modernization of uh, service sector economy urban based it is the time for rural uh, uh, country to also develop itself see five six points develop right away right so this is one side of the story when you say discuss remember that this is not the only side on the other hand you will also have to write the other side of the coin so the other side of the coin is uh, is it more urgent than uh, uh, than before or not so this is where you will mention the shortcomings for example despite the need it is not happening because of stagnancy in agriculture because of inertia in uh, the low, uh, the labor culture or farming culture this is one issue another issue is that of uh, um, disincentives disincentives in agriculture people are you know completely going farther from agriculture there is uh, less awareness amongst people right uh, less awareness among technology about people so these are the prime points but yes you can also start mentioning about corruption about disparity about uh, issues human resources development right exporting of skills whatever it be so many of them could be represented as a part of this answer right so we covered complete explanation of an answer as well right now what else uh, kriti says sir will drones be offered as a service or will farmers fly them if they will fly won't they need licenses okay good question kriti thank you see uh, drones as a service has been declared by the government right drones as a service just like software as a service drones will be given as a service but drone ownership has also been given there is no problem if you want to drone own the drones this was a part of the 2021 policy itself that drones and also de licensing for the small drones they will be de licensed just that it, every drone will have a chip in it and that chip will be enabled and that chip will be also a part of the uh, system of uh, the drones which is called as which is called as digital sky platform digital sky platform will have the knowledge about all the drones which are going to take off possibly possibly one will also have to feed in the data the drone application will also be used through phones so whenever whenever we are trying to fly the drone we will have to input and automatically digital sky platform will come to know that the drone is flying so these are for smaller level drones now we are not talking of uh, intercontinental drones here right flying 200 km these are very small drones we are talking of small micro nano drones are also there smaller drones can be flown without the use of these kind of licenses right so uh, this is the this is what is a part of the new drone policy this is the differentiation kriti all right so uh, thank you for asking this question if there are more questions please put them down in the comment section meanwhile note uh, down the segments that we discuss in this question because not only question the complete teacher news because we discuss so many issues and we are only moving ahead so maybe 6 months and 8 months down the line you will see that you will be empowered to be able to attempt all the questions all the questions especially related to Uh, the syllabus you will be able to answer something or the other definitely on that particular question just be a part of this uh, scheme that we discuss every day and please keep noting through the adec make it your primary habit and you will see how we will uh, forge ahead 
you know why because through this initiative uh, I, I really want to ensure that uh, you get through the examination right so uh, we have to attach ourselves to something or the other some structure if this is the structure you have attached yourself to for uh, quite a few months and if you find this fruitful look at the UPC questions no I want you to go to the website once go to the website and look at this uh, particular examination questions right paper one and paper two we will get paper three also upload, uploaded go to blogs I really want you to uh, be a party here complete analysis of GS paper 2 here the questions have also been put and how they have been answered by some of the test series questions or our main support program of paper 1 and paper 2 and how gazette has been of support I have created the file myself the the file created here if you get into this article if you get into this article at the base of this article you will find a link click here to see question wise mapping of various questions from our sources and when you click here you will see sources from gazette itself and how those questions could be answered through only gazette so now this is what you will be doing because you are consumer of this uh, particular resource right although free but uh, you still spending your valuable time point being look at this paper one and paper two you will quickly understand how to use gazette to be able to or current affairs discussion to be able to answer questions because upsc method this is the level of questions that we have that we have put right so this is the point and uh, i will see you tomorrow all of you right so thank you and good night hima ashish netra babani amlan ravi kriti welcome all of you right like this initiative will keep on becoming better than before thank you for participation